to everyone celebrating Transgender Day of Visibility. I want you to know that your president sees you. Jill, Kamala, Doug, our entire administration sees you for who you are, made in the image of God and deserving of dignity, respect, and support. If he would read the rest of the verse, he's quoting from Genesis 1:27. Yes, every person is made in God's image. Next part of the verse, male and female, he created them. And so literally the context of the verse obliterates the whole ideology that he's really pushing for. So recently, for the Transgender Day of Visibility, President Joe Biden put out a video about the issue. What he did is what false teachers do. He took part of scripture and then he twisted it to mean something else. He talked about the fact that transgender people are made in God's image and absolutely they are. Every single one of us, no matter what sins we may battle, we are made in the image of the living God and that is a glorious truth. But then he stopped there and he took that verse out of context of just ignores the rest of the verse and the rest of really the Bible to push a revolutionary transgender ideology. And this is really what the devil has always done. He's basically following the devil's model as he does this. That's what false teachers do. If you go back to Genesis chapter three, the devil said to Eve, did God really say? And he was at that time really getting her to question God's word. Did God say that exactly? Is that really what he meant? Can we reinterpret this a different way? Maybe he meant something totally different. And then the devil outright lied to Eve. He said, you won't die when you eat the fruit. God knows that when you eat the fruit, you'll be like him knowing good and evil, which was an outright lie because they would not know good and evil the way God knows it. But he twists the scripture and then he lies to her. And that is what false teachers do. They twist the scripture for their own gains, their own purposes to their own ends. And that's what President Joe Biden is doing here. Just read the verse together. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. But we know it's hard when there are those out there who don't see you and don't respect you. For example, the onslaught of anti-transgender state laws attacking you and your families is simply wrong. This administration is standing up for you against all these hateful bills. First of all, I don't know all the laws he's referring to, those bills he's referring to, but we do know that the majority of those bills and those laws are meant to protect women and to protect religious and parental rights. And so he's calling those sorts of things hateful because they go against the ideology he's pushing for. And he basically says in essence in those last few comments that those who disagree with him, they are being disrespectful and they are being hateful. He's calling those who disagree with him intolerant and bigoted when in fact he's actually being intolerant tolerant and bigoted towards those who disagree with his point of view. And guys, what is actually hateful would be to lead someone down the path of a lie, especially a child that leads to destruction. And we know the path that is good and right because it's laid out in God's word. You see, we mentioned earlier, we're all made in God's image. That is a biblical truth and we can cling to that, hold on to that. It's a glorious one. But there's also another truth we got to keep in mind as well, that we're all sinners broken by sin because we all descend from Adam. We're all broken by sin. We all battle sin in different ways. And so our natural inclinations are not necessarily good because they can be wrapped up in our sin. And encouraging people to follow those sinful inclinations leads them down a path of destruction and ruin and brokenness in this life and for eternity. So what he's advocating for is not loving towards these people. It's actually in reality, in a sense, it is hateful. What would be loving is to say to people, hey, this is what is true. You see, biblically, love is connected to who God is. Truth and love both come from God. You cannot separate God's love from his truth. So anything not in line with God's word and his truth is not loving. And so we want to be loving. And the act of love is actually doing something that's for the benefit of another, even if it costs you something. And so what would be loving as Christians on these issues? To proclaim to people with compassion, but this is what the Bible says. This is what the creator says, the God who made you. If he made you a boy, he made you a boy on purpose. If he made you a girl, he made you a girl on purpose. And he's infinite in wisdom and love and knowledge. He knows how you work best and he made you this way on purpose. Trust him. And if you have broken feelings that go against his revelation, that's rooted in sin. And there's a solution for that as well. You see, we're all broken by sin. And there's one common solution for all who are broken by sin and that is found in Christ. And so the loving thing to do is to point people to the word of God, to the truth of God and who we actually are, our real identity, and then also the source of hope and healing we have found alone in Christ. That would be true love and it is true love. Let's move on to the next part of the video. And we're committed to advancing transgender equality in the classroom, on the playing field, at work, in our 
military and our housing and healthcare systems everywhere, simply everywhere. Notice he is committed to advancing this transgender revolution. He says simply everywhere, classroom, ball field, workplace, wherever you're at, he's gonna push this ideology. Again, there is no neutral. He is not neutral. He is partial to a particular ideology and is pushing that ideology with the full weight and the force of his administration and the White House. And he's religious. He is zealous for this ideology. He wants to see converts. As we mentioned before, again, in a different video, everybody is religious. Everybody is evangelistic. Everybody wants to win converts. Sometimes they want to win or force converts one way or another. Today, we're announcing even more steps, but there's always more work to do to end the epidemic of violence against transgender women of color and girls of color, to ensure transgender seniors can age with dignity, dignity, and to finally pass a bipartisan Equality Act to help transgender persons around the world live free from discrimination and violence. Above all, to be there with you. To parents of transgender children, affirming your child's identity is one of the most powerful things you can do to keep them safe and healthy. In many ways, what he just said could not be further from the truth. But my question for now is, what are the next steps he was referring to? What next steps is he seeking to implement to really push this agenda on our nation? Well, we get some hints from that, actually not just hints, some outright declarations from him and the White House from different papers they have published through different agencies. One example would be the Office of Population Affairs. I want to read to you just a little quote from that particular document talking about some of the next steps that they see as vital to really pushing this ideology. It reads as such, gender affirming care is a supportive form of health care. It consists of an array of services that may include medical, surgical, mental health, and non-medical services for transgender and non-binary people. For transgender and non-binary children and adolescents, early gender Gender affirming care is crucial to overall health and well being. First, they posit this as a form of health care, therefore, they would declare it's a right of sorts. And then, what's part of this health care if you're a transgender person or transgender child? Part of the health care are medical provisions or surgical provisions. And this is to be available to younger and younger kids. We're talking about kids who are 12, 11, 10, 9 years old to help them fit the gender they feel like they are on the inside. That includes things like puberty blockers, hormone therapy, or even have surgeries to remove perfectly good functioning, God-given body parts, mutilating their body and breaking them physically, possibly emotionally, psychologically. It is evil. That is what this movement is. It's attacking children. It's literally an exploitation of children to push someone's agenda. It's experimenting on children because we know that some of the effects of these puberty blockers and hormone therapy can sterilize these children for the rest of their life, but we don't know the other effects. And then removing body parts. And by the way, for so many people who quote unquote transition very quickly, not long after that, they try to detransition back to their original gender. But if they've had these sorts of procedures, they've been permanently changed for the rest of their life. And it's pushing them down a path that leads only to destruction. The Bible says this, the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And when you abandon God's word and God's created design, that is what you end up with. And that is what the president is pushing, endorsing, and leading the charge for in this transgender revolution. My friend, it is evil. And that's why we as Christians can't stand by and say, well, I mean, it can't be that bad. I mean, sure, if they feel that way. And by the way, if they feel that way, doesn't it mean that they were just born that way? Way. And so we should let them do what they want to do and help them on that journey. Not at all. Please understand that since we're all broken sinners, we all have inclinations that we feel because of that sin nature that are not not necessarily good. Just because we have an inclination, a desire for a particular sin, does not make that sin good, right, or normative. I mean, think about it. Someone who's inclined towards violence is not justified in beating their wife. Someone who's inclined to sexual activity is not justified in committing adultery. Guys, sin is sin, no matter how we feel about it. But that's why there is such good news that we we have a salvation from our sin. No matter what sin you may struggle with, no matter how you're broken again, we're all broken by sin. We all are. And the solution for all of us is the same. It is found in Christ. We know who we are in Christ, in his word. The Bible calls us to repent of our sin and put our faith in Christ to submit to him. And in him, we find our hope and our identity. He sees you. He actually sees you. He knows you. He's made a way of salvation for you and every human who will repent and put their faith in him. Him, turn to him. Guys, we hope this has been helpful to you today. If you want more on this, check out this video right here on gender and sexuality and the Bible, and I'll see you guys next time.